Okay, here's another little statics problem for you. Let's say that we have three masses. Uh, one of them is sitting on a frictionless table, a frictionless surface here. And let's say that that mass is equal to 20 kilograms. And let's say that the mass M1 is equal to 5 kilograms. And what we want to know is, what is M2? So that this system is in equilibrium. In other words, it's not sliding one way or the other. Well, that almost seems trivial because obviously, if this mass is sitting on a frictionless table, there's no friction resisting the movement one way or the other, so it wouldn't make any difference whether it's there or not. In other words, I could just connect this cable straight across, and then obviously M2 would have to be equal to M1. You can just write down the answer like that. So M2 is equal to 5 kilograms. Well, that's pretty easy, but what if, in fact, we have the same masses, but instead of being on a flat table like that, we put them on an incline. We put the masses on an incline like this. Obviously, <clears throat> if M1 and M2 are equal, this is not going to work. In other words, the big mass M is going to cause this whole thing to fall down this direction. M2 is not big enough, not massive enough to offset the uh, fact that M is trying to slide down this table and is not resting level on it. So how do we figure out how big M2 has to be in order to keep M, uh, big M from sliding, to keep the whole thing in a system, uh, a state of equilibrium? So I'll just remind you that M is equal to 20 kilograms and M1 was equal to 5 kilograms so what we need to know is how big does M2 have to be in order to keep this thing in equilibrium well the way to look at that here are the forces acting force due to gravity acting this way is M1g force due to gravity acting on this mass is M2g and the force acting on this mass is big M times G and the tension in these two different in these two cables is T1 and T2 if it's in a state of equilibrium this mass is not moving, this mass is not moving, so I have to have that T1 is equal to M1G, and I have to have that T2 is equal to M2G. And it's tempting to say, well, T1 and T2 are equal, just like it was on the flat table, so that they'd be the same, but obviously that's not the case. So we have to figure out the difference in T1 and T2. So let's just take a look at, the, uh, at, at what T2 is. And if I take this system right here, just this system right here, and look at the forces that are try, trying to <clears throat> pull it down the uh, incline, I have the force M1G plus I have the parallel component of the force acting on the big mass like this and this we know since this angle right here this angle right here let me, let me draw it here this is angle theta also so that means that the parallel component which it always is is big mg times the sine of theta those are the forces that are causing this system to try to go this way. And if it's not going that way, that means that T2 is equal to this. 
this is equal to T2, and that's equal to M2G, and that's how we get our solution. In other words, I can write this, noting that there's a G in each term, I can write this as M1 plus big M sine theta is equal to M2, that's what I meant to say there, M2. And then I'll just plug in the numbers, that's 5 kilograms plus 20 kilograms times the sine of 60 degrees. I didn't say it, but theta is equal to 60 degrees. And that works out to be, you just take your calculator, that works out to be 22.32 kilograms approximately. That's what M2 is. So it's considerably bigger than the 5 kilograms that was required when it was sitting flat on the table. But if you think about it, if the inclined plane were not even here, and you had a pulley up here like this supporting both this one and that one, well, then M2 would have to be equal to the sum of these two masses, which would be 25. So it's almost the same, but it's a little bit less because of that incline. And that's it.